BP Oil Spill Cleanup by Baldwin van der Weyden. What was the BP oil spill? Also known as the Deepwater Horizon Spill or the Gulf of Mexico Oil Spill, the BP oil spill was the largest in U.S. history. The cause of the spill was an explosion on British Petroleum's Deepwater Horizon oil drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico on April 20, 2010. That explosion resulted in 11 deaths and the release of millions of barrels of crude oil into the Gulf over 87 days. The explosion happened on an oil rig that Transoceanic and Halliburton owned and that the BP was using as a part of their Macondo Prospect project. How slash why did it happen, specifically the human errors? In 2011, the government created a short list of what they believed went wrong. Defective cement on the borehole, failure of two valves, a glass alarm, and battery backup systems, misinterpretation of pressure tests, insufficient management and industry oversight, the failure of the safety equipment is a human error for not checking it. So is the insufficient management, which includes the misinterpretation of pressure tests. Pressure test misinterpreted. The crew carried out various pressure tests to determine whether the well was sealed or not. The results of these tests were misinterpreted, so they thought the well was under control. Gas alarm failure and battery for BOP failure. The rig had an onboard gas detection system that should have sounded the alarm and triggered the closure of ventilation fans to prevent the gas reaching potential causes of ignition, such as the rig's engine. The system failed. The explosion destroyed the control lines the crew were using to attempt to close safety valves in the blowout preventer. However, the blowout preventer has its own safety mechanism in which two separate systems should have shut the valves automatically when it lost contact with the surface. One system seems to have had a flat battery and the other a defective switch. Consequently, the blowout preventer did not close. Engineering reasons for its occurrence. As stated before, some of the reasons for the spill are not human error or incompetence, but material errors such as the valve failure, failed cement, overwhelmed, or the overwhelmed separator. Valve failure. The bottom of the pipe to the surface was sealed in two ways. It was filled with cement, and it also contained two mechanical valves designed to stop the flow of oil and gas. All these failed, allowing oil and gas to travel up the pipe towards the surface. Failed cement. The cement at the bottom of the borehole did not create a seal, and oil and gas began to leak through it into the pipe leading to the surface. BP says the cement formulation seems not to have been up to the job. Overwhelmed separator. The crew had the option of diverting the mud and gas away from the rig, venting it safely through pipes over the side. Instead, the flow was diverted to a device on board the rig designed to separate small amounts of gas from a flow of the mud. The so-called mud gas separator was quickly overwhelmed and flammable gas began to engulf the rig. What were the effects of the spill? An overview of what the effects were is that the well spilled 3.19 million barrels of oil into the waters of the Gulf and onto the shorelines of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, 1,300 miles of shoreline. The spill devastated the fishing and tourism industries of the Gulf Coast region and caused the deaths of countless numbers of marine life and seabirds, many of which are endangered species. It immediately threatened more than 65,000 acres in four national wildlife refugees, home to endangered species. How it affected the economy. Oyster harvest decreased by 23%. Fisheries lost around $173 million, and tourism lost around $691 million. How it affected the animals. The pelican population changed and decreased 12%. Total birds killed were 800,000, and the number of dolphins found dead along the Gulf Coast since the spill was 1,000. Overview of the cleanup process. A variety of techniques are used to address an oil spill. Some of these include containing the oil on the surface, dispersal, and removal. BP began, BP began to document their daily response efforts on their website below, and onto the next couple of slides are the results. On the 28th of April, the U.S. military joined the cleanup operation. The response increased in scale as the spill volume grew. Initially, BP employed remotely 
operative underwater vehicles or ROVs, 700 workers, 4 and 32 vessels. By April 29, 69 vessels including skimmers, tugs, barges, and recovery vessels were in use. By May 4, 2010, the USCG estimated that 170 vessels and nearly 7,500 personnel were participating, with an additional 2,000 volunteers assisting. On May 31, 2010, BP set up a call line to, tackle, to take cleanup suggestions, which received 92,000 responses, by late June, 320 of which were categorized as promising. Overview of the cleanup process continued. In summer 2010, approximately 47,000 people and 7,000 vessels were involved in the response works. By October 3, 2012, federal response costs amounted $85 million, most of them reimbursed by BP. As of January 2013, 935 response personnel were still involved in response activities in the region. For that time, BP's costs for cleanup operations exceeded $14 billion. Step 1. Containment. The response included deploying many miles of containment booms whose purpose is to either corral the oil or to block in it from a marsh, mangrove, shrimp, crab, oyster, ranch, or other ecologically sensitive areas. Although booms can be a very effective way of containing an oil spill, they only can extend 18 to 48 inches above and below the water surface and are affected only in relatively calm and slow moving waters. This means that booms can only work to a point. More than 1,000 feet of containment booms were initially de deployed to protect the coast of the, and the Mississippi River. By the next day, that nearly doubled to 180,000 feet, with an additional 300,000 feet stayed or being deployed. In total, during the crisis, nine mil about 9 million feet one-time used sorbent booms and f about 4 million feet of containment uh, booms were deployed. What are booms and how do they work? Oil is less dense than water, giving it buoyant properties. That means when oil releases into the ocean, it naturally floats to the surface rather than sink to the bottom or hover in the middle. This makes containment booms highly effective at creating a barrier that traps oil in a thick layer on the water surface. Any oil that releases into water will travel to the surface where booms are waiting to contain it. According to the diagram to the right here, you can see that a thick float chamber holds the boom in place and then all the oil gets trapped in the draft. Step 2. Dispersal. Another method to control the spill was through dispersals. Dispersals were seen as the most effective and fast-moving tool for minimizing shoreline impact. Altogether, 84 million U.S. gallons of dispersants were used. What is an oil dispersant and how does it work? An oil dispersant is a mixture of emulsifiers and solvents that helps break oil into small droplets following an oil spill. Some droplets are easier to disperse throughout a water volume and small droplets may, may be more readily biodegraded by microbes. During the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, an estimated 1.84 million gallons of core exit was used in an attempt to reduce the amount of surface oil and mitigate the damage to coastal habitat. BP purchased one-third of the world's supply of core exit soon after the, spo after the spill began. Core exit is a product line of oil dispersants used during oil spills response operations. Core exit is typically applied to an by aerial spraying or spraying from ships directly onto an oil slick. On contact with the dispersant, oil that would otherwise float on the surface of the water is emulsified into tiny droplets and sinks, or in the usual case of subsurface sub application, remains suspended in the water. This allows the oil to be more readily degraded by bacteria and prevents it from going onto beaches and into marshes. Step 3. Removal. There are three ways that oil from oil spills are usually removed. Burning the oil, filtering offshore, and collecting for later processing. BP and its consultants decided that it would try to burn most of it and collect the rest through skimmers.
burning the oil. The USCG announced plans to corral and burn up, burn off up to 1,000 barrels of oil each day. Within a few months, it was reported that an estimated 13 million U.S. gallons of oil was removed from the water by burning. The oil was collected skim through skimmers. More than 60 open water skimmers were deployed, including 12 purpose-built vehicles. What are skimmers? Skimmers are boats and other devices that can remove oil from the sea surface before it reaches sensitive areas along the coastline. In the photo to the right, oil is being skimmed from the sea surface by a vessel of opportunity. Sometimes two boats will tow a collection boom, allowing oil to concentrate within the boom where it is then picked up by a skimmer. How do skimmers work? Oil adheres to the outside of a floating closed loop tube as it is drawn across the surface of the water, adjusting automatically to changing water levels. The movement of the tube across the surface cr actually creates a current that draws in the oil. The oil-covered tube passes through ceramic scrapers that remove the oil and clean the tube, and the clean tube then returns to the surface to collect more. The recovered oil flows into a collection container and is virtually water-free.